All right, everyone, we'd like to welcome you back. To it's a bit. Very special guest with us. We have Justin Gard with us in the studio. He works at KFAN. He's a producer, also a host of the Cake Eater Show, as well as a sideline reporter uh, for the Gophers. Gardsy, how's it going? I'm good, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. It's a long list of dignitaries here, so um, I don't have any cool stories like meat sauce about snakes or anything like that, but I'll do my best. <laughs> I'll do my best to hang with them. Uh, do you have any stories about any other animals? Man, any dog I don't think so. Did you ever get bit yeah, by a dog I mean, I'd have to anything? think about it. I probably should have come prepared. There probably should have been like a pre-interview process where you guys, you know, tell me to, to come with stuff, but we'll, I'll think of something as we go on. I'll think of something, I'm sure. Well, well, I know you mentioned you had kids. I mean, have you have any crazy stories about your uh, your own children? That yeah. Are... <laughs> uh, well, I'll give you the most recent. So I just got home. Uh, <laughs> I just got home, and I mentioned that you'll probably hear my children at some point. I've got the door locked, so they shouldn't come in. That doesn't mean they won't. They, you know, a six year old could probably figure out how to pick this lock, but they were. Uh, it was bath time, and uh, as I got home, and the kids were getting out of the bath, and my wife was scolding the two boys. Um, basically, they for some reason think it's funny to just like stick their tongues out and then just like try to lick their forehead, their cheek. Like they've, the, the tongue is a yeah. weapon now. This is what you have to look forward okay. to. It's disgusting. It's gross. And these are the conversations as a dad you have to have. It's like, keep your tongue in your mouth, keep it to yourself and don't bother anybody with it. And they weren't listening to me, but yeah, it's, so, yeah. it's a gong show. I mean, I know you had Paul Nassan, you, you heard his kids. Like it's, I always, the people that piss me off the most, quite frankly, are the ones that go, you know, I just don't remember my life without kids. Like my life had no meaning before I had children. It's like, yeah, I remember my life before kids. It was awesome. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was, it was, it was unbelievable. And their blessings. I'm running out of ways to count my blessings. We love them. All the disclaimers, all the crap you hear, but yeah, man, it's wild. The the stuff that you say that you never thought you would say, the stuff that you see that you never thought you'd see. It's it's that's fatherhood in a nutshell. So okay, good luck so to everybody out there. To summarize what you just said, once you get married and have kids, tongue stuff becomes a bad thing, right? But <laughs> exactly. before then, it, it could be a whole other avenue. Yeah, okay. I mean, it, it's, yeah. that's 100% right. Like, there comes a point where there's an age. I don't know what the age is where it's cool, <laughs> um, but not now. It's certainly not yeah. now. And is you, what you worry about is whatever they do here, they're going to do at school. Like, here you, yeah. can, you can mitigate it. Once they're out into the real world, you don't know what the hell they're going to do, and you just hope they're nice to everybody. Well, that's like Bubba when he starts sending emails. I get worried that he's going to oh. make us look bad or, or he's going to say something <laughs> wrong or do something wrong. Well, it, <laughs> the guy, it's like he can barely write a sentence. You're like, this is horrendous. This should not even be sent out to anybody in the world. No, no to, one should see this. to his credit, he's been the one getting a lot of the big guests. But, uh, Guardsy, I know you, you really like the Kirk Cousins bit. So if, if you ever want to yeah. reference Kirk, he's, he's actually in the studio uh, is he Kirk here tonight? Just, oh, that's great. yeah. He's he's on call. He hangs out in the hallway and just kind of plays like uh, plays games on the iPad. But if we need him, yeah. you can call him in and we'll. Uh, I heard him with PA, opinion. and I know he was spending some time in Florida with the in laws. So I'm glad that he made this a smart decision to come back for this show. I'm excited to talk to Kirk in a little while. Yep, he took a private jet all the way out here. Actually, <laughs> Kirk, do you want to you want to say something right now? Yeah, we'll get him in here. <laughs> I just want to say I really love and appreciate what you do, Guardsy. Uh, you know, you're a blessing to the people and uh, and to the state of Minnesota. God bless. And uh, I know me and Julie listen to the show every day, and uh, Barrero, and we, we just love what you do. And Skull Vikings, God bless Kirk Cousins. It's the best. There you go. I told you, you, get, you keep that going as long as you possibly can. You ride that. Like, I got my, like, break at the fan because I could do random impressions. Like, I'm so old, like, I could do, like, you guys know who Matt Kowalska is? Uh, I don't think so. I don't. This I don't is, know. This is I've heard the serious. name though. So in like 2002, 2003, Gopher hockey was a big deal, and so like yep. the hockey, the hockey players were like stars. Like they were on PA and Dubay every week. They were on Rose and Sports Sunday every week. They were winning national championships. Matt Kowalska was like the most media friendly, like coolest dude. He's coaching somewhere now in high school. Still a great guy. But I had a killer Matt Kowalska impression. <laughs> And that like got me in the door at the fan because all of a sudden Matt Kowalska, I could do his impression. And it's just like, a, it's a hockey guy, right? It's like, oh, you just got to yeah. get the, the passes tape to tape and move your feet and get some shots on that and hope the, hope the boys show up. Like, yeah. he sounded yeah. like every every hockey guy that you've ever heard of. And then if, but as and an, if they as win, an intern, the boys like, are That's all yep. I could do. That's all I that's could do kinda, is random, random impressions. Right. That's kind of your bit too, Jake, though. Like, you have the Paul Allen one. I love that one. Well, just the no. It's more of just screaming. But <laughs> yeah, it's just screaming. The other but part's hard. The season yeah. can't end like this. 
Well, and then even my uh, – I know you, you do the show with Dan Barrero, and my my dad, he doesn't do an impression, but he always told – he worked with a guy back in the day that he told me would always do a Barrero impression. You'd only do, like, one phrase. He'd always go up to him and be like, I, 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 you lost me. That that's what he would that's what he would do because it's like that's the one thing that would stick out to him. And my dad yeah. would always mention there'd be a guy at his work that would always just do this Barrero impression of that. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense, you know. Just are there simplicity. any impressions? You mm-hmm. Go ahead. Are there any impressions you still do that that you're no, that you I would mean, say again, they're, they're or kind, of kind of out of the game, you know? And I'd I'd hate to I don't want to step on our Kirk Cousins because th- I think that should be the star of the podcast tonight. And so. Okay. Like I did like, like random ones, like the, that's what, what made him so stupid was that, that like the old gopher athletic director, Norwood Teak, you know, who resigned in yes. disgrace like five yeah. years ago, he would always just come up and be like, Garzy, I was thinking about getting a golden team machine. Do you think I should get that for my house? And like, that's how he would talk. <laughs> and so he would come up with these random things and be like, you know, I'm not sure. Like a lot of it comes back to recruiting. He just kind of had this high twang. And Garzy, that's how he said my name. Like, Garzy? That, those are, yeah, those are – so we still do that from time to time. And he would always ask, ask questions where you just wondered what was going on, you know, what was going on in his head. We found out later what was going on in his head, unfortunately, for him. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's just – yeah, there's nobody like – nobody like really famous or really cool or really meaningful um it's just stupid ones that i hear over and over and i just kind of adapt yeah. those in there well i think i think my new goal in life has changed now like financials keep it out of it uh future status whatever i just want one person to be able to do an impression of me and then i feel like i've made it i also yeah. want a wikipedia page so if i get if i do those two things i can die happy so, i think you're on your way yeah at least hopefully halfway there at some point uh, going back to sideline gopher reporting, um, you know, how do you how do you keep yourself entertained during all those down years? Well, you know, there is, I mean, just so much heartbreak and gopher fans. Like, you know, it's got to be a tough job when we're losing left and right well, in the old days. I wanted to ask, yeah, when, when did you start doing that exactly? Was it during some of those crappy years? Like, uh, t- n- no, not really. I mean, I've been lucky. Like, so 2011 was my first year. So that was okay. Jerry Kill's first oh, yeah. year. So I just yeah. missed. So I, I actually had the best of all of it. I got to just like cover from afar the Brewster era oh. and not have to be, not <laughs> have to be right in that <laughs> yeah. mix. Um, so I got that. We got to have all the fun with that. And so, you know, I've covered a couple different, I guess, first years because I've done Jerry. I did Tracy and obviously did PJ. And the first year, I mean, you just kind of know, like, it's going to be weird. And, you know, they, I think they were three and eight, I want to say, the first year for Jerry Kill. Um, but it's really not that bad. The only, truthfully, the only thing I ever worry about is I don't want it to be a disaster at halftime. Because the halftime interview, as you know, is mostly meaningless. Like, I like being able to do it, and it's fun to do it, and it's a great job. But if they're just getting trucked at halftime or, or the coach has made a dumbass decision that I have to ask him about, like, that's what I'll sit there like five minutes and a half. I'm like, what the hell am I going to ask this coach? Yeah, I'd be the, you know? I'd be having anxiety about that, like starting in the yeah. second quarter. Well, well exactly. especially if they're getting blown out too. you. Yeah. Like, I know I got to ask him this one question that's just going to get him pissed off. Yeah. Like, yeah. What happened? So what do you got to do yeah. better? Fucking everything. <laughs> yeah. That's what they're going to say. Yeah. He's scared to death. Yeah. Like, like, and I'll just go like, they're getting blown out. I'll talk like during a break, like upstairs, like we talk every, during every break, you know, to like Mike Grimm, the voice of the Gophers and Daryl's up there, Daryl Thompson. And, and sometimes I'll just go, uh, fellas, I'm, I'm open for advice, you know, halftime post game, like anything you think I should ask. Cause like what, what really is the toughest one is when they make a dumb decision, like, you know, for example, not going for, well, not even not going for, but like faking a punt, you know, inside their own 30, you know, mm-hmm. like in the first half. Like, I think PJ did that, I want to say, in the Michigan game because they didn't have any kickers. Their defense yep. was ravaged. Oh. Like, this last year, they had all <laughs> yes, this COVID brutal. issues. That was a horrible just like, game. How, how do I phrase it where it's not going to piss them off, but I still have to, like, ask it because everybody's thinking it. And you get two, you basically get two questions. And, so that's the only time I have anxiety. Like post game, I don't have a ton. Like there's a there's been a couple times where the coach has gotten mad at me. But what really makes it easy, I'll be honest, and I'm not just saying this. Like if you watch some of these sideline reporters, like or coaches, like when they're coming off, like they're such jackasses to the sideline person. Nick Saban. Like, yeah, yeah, name he, call. Nick, that guy you. is a douchebag. Yeah. Ooh. Nick, Nick yelling at Maria Taylor, or you know, we've seen them all over the. You know, that had Lloyd Carr used to do that to go back to the old Michigan days. Like everybody remembers, like Greg Popovich too. Like that's not like his bit. He's just a jerk during those interviews. Yeah, yeah. like Jerry has always been good. Tracy was always good. PJ's always good. Almost no matter the situation. Like on 
I can count maybe like two or three times where they've gotten pissed. And some yeah. of that could have been how I handled it too. So, but that's like the lo- the wins and the losses, like that's on like there, there's going to be wins. There's going to be losses. Like some of them are worse than others and that's just sports. But like, I worry about situations where if it's like, Oh God, I got to ask him, what was he thinking on this play? Like, that's yeah. so stupid. Like, why would you do that? I remember Jerry faked a, a field goal one time and I knew it was coming because I'd been to practice. So I like knew their call and I knew what they did. And I'm like, well, this is stupid. You know, I'm just standing there on the yeah. side like, this is not going to work. This is going to yeah. be bad. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to ask him about it. Like, that's what gives me the anxiety. It's not like winning or losing. Like, that's just part of it. By the time I talk to him after a game, they've usually calmed down about it for the most part. And thankfully, like more years than not, there's been more wins than losses. So that's always easy when there's like five guys that had good games and you just go, Antoine Winfield Jr., your thoughts. Uh, yeah, Carter right. Poplin, mm-hmm. your thoughts. Yeah, Sean easy. Bateman, he's good. <laughs> Tanner yep. Morgan, he's good. Hey, there was fans on the field. What was that like? Okay, thanks, coach. Row the boat, Sky Uma, go Gophers. Like that's so easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's the it's the times where it's not that cut and dry. Where I'm like, that, those are the ones you get paid for, truthfully. Yeah, the, where it's like the ones that are easy, like anybody could do. You have a little to more daunting. Yeah. It's like, hey, coach, yeah. why were you play calling like a drunk kid playing Madden? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, then, <laughs> honest question. And you've been there for like Jerry and Tracy and PJ, like you said. How long does it take to like? transition between coaches and like how you approach them and like the questions you that, like you ask them because I, I have a feeling it's different for every coach so how long does it take to like feel that out Ooh, that's a good one um I guess I don't have an answer um it just it just kind of depends um you know what they like and what they don't like what they'll answer what they won't answer like you can't you know like Tracy I only had the one year but he was the coordinator for Jerry so I kind of felt like I knew him um I mean you kind of know the rules are kind of all the same for all of them like you kind of know how you want to phrase it you kind of know how you want to talk about it um you know what they're not gonna like Uh, and you also know how they try to throw you off a little bit I think that's what you learn um you learn how they're going to try to redirect it or where they're going to take it or what they're going to do to try to get you off a little bit of your game um and so but for the most part, like I said, they've all been really good. Like I'm, I feel lucky to work with those guys. Even on the basketball side, like doing shows with Richard Pitino, it's like you can't ask for a better media person to deal with because some of these right. guys make it yeah. such a pain in the ass, and it's just like it's not that complicated, guys. <laughs> well, like, did you see that Coach K not... asked that that college kid as major oh and did the ridiculous. whole econ. It's like, dude, yeah, you, you've won, you you've had the most dream worthy career. Like there are millions of people who would kill to be in your position and you're going to go after a guy for asking what the next steps are like come right. on that should be something you're always thinking about as a coach like one bad season and all the seasons he's ever been there exactly and that's how he treats and them. then he just treats everyone like shit it's Reporter, like, mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. see and that's why i have such a respect for people like you because we don't have to ask people serious questions you know they're not like, <laughs> like, pe- people don't come onto our our programming like expecting us to be geniuses because we're not and that's kind of the bit but You know, for people who actually have to come up with really good responses that are going to solicit, you know, information that people want to know, it it can definitely not be an easy job. Well, yeah, it's the hardest part is, and it's not hard. Again, it's so much fun. And it's like, I'm so lucky to do it is when things aren't going well. And like, and, and, you know, like, I mean, you guys know social media, like what a disaster that is. And you have to straddle like, okay the relationship with the school relationship with this job, you know, how obviously is one side, then the fans are the other. And it's like, I try to be like, Hey, what do the fans want to know? And then take out all the swear words of how they've, the fans have phrased it to me and regurgitate it there. The hardest part (laughs) is when things, you know, like asking Richard Pitino about like his job security last year. Like that's, you know, luckily I have a relationship with him where he knows I'm not going to like, you know, I'm not out there trying to like get him or call for his head, but it was a real thing. Like outwardly, like, Hey, things aren't going very well right now. Like, do you worry that you're going to get a call at the end of the year and you're going to get fired? And that was probably like 15, 20 minutes of great stuff. That's, you know, Richard to his credit always hits that stuff head on. Um, so it's, uh, but yeah, it's luckily there haven't been too many words, but you want, but you have to ask that stuff. That's what the biggest barrier is coaches understanding that you have to ask those things sometimes not all the time not every time it comes up but there's times when the noise is so loud that it's stupid to not address it because it just makes you look like you're ignoring all of it and that doesn't do anybody any good 
I feel like that's a very fine line. And then, like, when the coach doesn't understand that, that's when you get the coaches that blow up and they have the viral yeah. videos of oh, them you guys, going crazy. You guys remember the Connecticut basketball coach who – you know? Uh, it, no, uh, the men's coach, right? Yeah, the men's coach. A journalist basically like said, "This is how much you get paid," and he just went off on the guy. <laughs> he, that yeah. was when he's like, when he just told, he's like, "Can I give you a word of advice?" And the guy's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Shut up!" He just like <laughs> says that to his face. It's like so funny. Oh my god! Well, you're in that position though to create those viral moments out of coaches when you're yeah. when you're a journalist or a sideline reporter or something. So you're kind of creating entertainment in a way. Right. So you're there to do we that. We are who they thought they yeah, were. We are who they <laughs> thought they were. I'm a man. Yeah. I'm 40. Oh my god! We're just going yeah. over the Mount Rushmore of press conferences. Oh now. man! Playoffs. Playoffs. Oh god! <laughs> just classic, go man. Journalists ignite that stuff, man. It's we're 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 we're, we're unsung heroes of the entertainment world. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Yeah, well, I promise but, uh, you, you don't want to be – there is no worse feeling. Like, sometimes it's just, like, me and the coach, and if you get, like, a look, you're like, oh, man. Like, that's oh, a bad yeah. feeling, you know? And so you try yeah. to avoid that, but you still have to – I mean, that's what you got to do. You got to ask the questions sometimes, and, you know, it's not always going to be fun. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, well, speaking of criticism, and obviously you're on Dan Barrero, one of the, you know, more fa- – pop most one of the most popular shows in the region – and you've definitely been in, been on, in the spotlight and maybe giving some takes or obviously silent reporting for Gopher football. Have you ever received any crazy hate mail for anything you've said or anything like that? That includes Twitter too, because I bet everywhere. you've gotten plenty of them. Oh yeah, yeah. well every day. I mean, it happens yeah. every day, every single day. Right. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's been the best decision I made. Like two years ago, I was just letting it like because everybody says they don't care about it. Everybody's full of crap. Everybody yeah. cares about oh, yeah. it. Like to a certain extent. Now you can't let it dominate your life. Um, but just anything, I mean, it, it, anything you say, like you're a homer about this, you're an idiot about that. You look stupid. Uh, believe it or not, guys get stuff about their appearance too, which we should, we all look like trolls. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I totally understand yeah. all that, but yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. Like two years ago, I finally started, you know, Kirk Herbstreet had a great tweet one day. Cause he, cause I, I don't imagine how people do like actual famous people that have like millions of followers. Like imagine what's on their Twitter wall. Like oh, they probably have shit show. thousands of mentions every day. And if, if Twitter's the sample size, it's, they're probably like 75% are, you know, cursing them out or yelling at them or calling them idiots or whatever. I don't know how those people do it and don't lose their mind. I think the only thing you can do is just ignore it to a certain extent. But Herb Street had a good line where he said, every once in a while, the animals at the zoo have to bite back. Like to let the people know, like let the customers know, like this is yeah. their house. Um, Cause he gets into stuff. Some, some of these guys, I, it takes too much energy to go, you know, crazy on these people. But like two years ago, I made a decision. I'm like, I'm not going to get in a Twitter battle. Cause I'm never going to win. How am I? Yeah. Right. No. How, you, well, then like, you stoop to is, their level too. Well, that's kind of what we not do. Even that, like, I don't like when people are like, Oh, this guy's got like three followers or five followers. So it's like, well, that's irrelevant. Like, that a follower count is not indicative of what kind of human you are, or what kind of success. Obviously, if you're famous, you're going to have a lot of people. If you have a high profile job, you're going to have a lot of people. But in the grand scheme of things, like Twitter followers as like a, a badge of honor is stupid. Um, so when people are like don't respond to him, he's got five followers. I would say don't respond to him because you're not going to win. Like, ha- yeah. have you ever sat like after matter. a tweet? Like, how many arguments have you guys sat through just in real life and been like, it's a good point. I'm backing down. Like yeah. I yeah. totally yeah. see your, your side. Like it never <laughs> happens ever. So I finally was like, oh, I'm not going to win these. I'm wasting my time. It's making me mad. I'm the one that's going to lose. Cause I'll say something. This person's not going to lose their job. If they cross the line, you know, most mm-hmm. of the time they're they not have a profile picture. Correct. Yeah, right. well, a- <laughs> if I, I can lose my job. People get fired for Twitter all the time. And I am not qualified to do anything else, man. Like I have to do these jobs or I am screwed. Yeah. Um, so like two years ago, I just said, I'm out on the Twitter battles and very rarely do I get in them now. Um, yeah. Cause you, I could very easily do it every single day if I wanted to, cause there's at least one that says something, does something about something you say or do or wrote or tweeted or whatever that pisses you off, but you just can't do it. I know you like try to block it out and everything, but is there anything that like sticks out? That's been like the craziest, like most off the wall thing someone has said to you that you just had like to- a personal attack. Yeah, <laughs> We've gotten some uh, of those, but we've gotten some crazy yeah. shit. <laughs> Not off the top of my head. I mean, those are almost easier to just like, well, this person's insane, you know, yeah. and, and even, even <laughs> like, even like Zach Ill. Halverson today, Zach Halverson, you know, somebody tweeted out to him, you know, cause I, he had mentioned, I don't know if you guys saw this, that he was soliciting 
requests for hotel accommodations in St. Louis Park. I don't know if he's got to yeah, work I like three full days. Like, I'm not kidding, guy. If you've ever been to our studio, someday you can come by. From our studio, you can see three hotels, like in St. Louis Park in the West End. And I'm just like, how yep. lazy are you, dude? That you like, <laughs> yeah. Th- there's the Homewood, there's the Double Tree, there's the Marriott. Like, what are you? What are you even doing? Just to give him crap, you know, because that, that's what we do. And somebody replied to him, called him fat, said he that he, he used oh his COVID God. GoFundMe to go to Vegas, and he responded to it. And I'm like, dude, you can't respond to that. That idiot literally just wants to tweet that out so he feels good about himself. And yeah. he had a good point. Like, it hurts his mom because moms read everything. Like, and I'm sure you guys yep. had this experience too. Like, it's not oh, yeah. us yep. that get affected by. <laughs> it's not us that get affected by that stuff. It's our moms. It's our wives. It's our friends. Like they're the ones that take it really hard, which is good. It means you got a good group of people around you, but it's like, you can't. So like his mom was pissed. So she was going to say something. So to preempt her saying something, he said something I'm like, I get it. Yeah. Moms are going to mom. Like, yep. Yeah. They're going to want to fight your battles. But, but the stuff about like, you know, just, I mean, it, the personal stuff, it's like, it just rolls you know, it just rolls off because those people are so far gone. It's like, what are we yeah. going to do? They well, don't worry about and it. We, we have experience with this. We back, was it back in like, I think it was November. We, one of our podcasts, we were talking shit about Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> somehow got the entire Packers TikTok community on us. Like this video had 130,000 views, like hundreds of comments, just personal attacks, like calling us dorks, wannabes, losers, morons, pretty much every bad word in the book. And it's kind of sad, though. At some point, you just get numb to it. And then, yeah. like, at, I mean, now we even laugh at it sometimes. It's laughable. When, yeah. when it was coming in, I'm like, this Someone is, spent this their is time to we, write this. But th- when I was looking at that, I'm like, this is what we wanted to do. We want you to, like, like you're that irritated. Like, we obviously got that real estate in your head. We're ban- like, yeah, you fell right in the trap. You fell, Like, you're pissed off about it. Well, you're pissed off because maybe you think it's true. I don't know. But it's almost a similar motive that these, like, small accounts with five followers and no profile picture, they're like, I want Zach Halverson to respond to me. And then, like, that that means I've won. So, yeah, you just can't give those losers the attention. Well, the best line is don't accept – don't take criticism from people you wouldn't take praise from or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. They're not relevant. Like, it's not – no. And it's the same thing because it goes on the other side. Like, people – it you have to check yourself on like, wow, that was a great interview or that was a great question or that was a great segment. That was a great bit. Like you guys have seen those like for stuff that you've done. Uh, I'd be curious what, how Kirk cousins kind of remains level headed, you know, Kirk, like you obviously, he's in the corner. You got a lot of highs and lows throughout your career, you know, the new Orleans game. And then there's game, other game. Like how do you keep level headed and make sure that, you know, you just are very centered in everything. Kirk, put the pudding cup down. We only have three more of those. Yeah. Here. (laughs) All right, how do you how do you keep level headed to the hate, Kirk? Uh, Julie keeps me grounded. Uh, I come home sometimes a little a little pissed off, but you know she keeps me grounded. Throws me a uh, you know gives me some pizza ranch, and uh, I uh, eat some of my cousin cinnamon snaps on sale at High V. On sale at High V. And uh, you know, cents. just oh. uh, read the good book and uh, <laughs> pray pray to the big guy upstairs, and just uh, and just have a good time meditate sometimes and watch my new lg oled tv oh and, that bit dude uh, just just relax and have a good time hey when you go to pizza ranch i love pizza ranch by the way um i love how like everything that makes a small town great i don't know if you guys know this but i've always said that like my family's all from iowa and in every good iowa small town there was a high v there was a casey's market and there was a pizza ranch Casey's. or K- Casey's gas yeah. station, right? Yeah. Well, now, like, where, where you guys are right now, like, all of a sudden, I start going down to Lakeville, like, driving through stuff. I'm like, crap, they got a they got a Casey's and they got a high V and they got a they got a pizza ranch. Like, Lakeville's on the on the <laughs> yeah, like, I got like, everything I need in this town. Right. And so, yeah. but like, I love how everything that I thought was great in a small town is now coming up here because we've got Casey's everywhere. High V obviously is taking over. Now, High V is like a small Iowa you know, Iowa based grocery store that my aunt Connie used to work in the greenhouse at in Waverly, Iowa. Like that was just like what they did. Now they're a corporate sponsor of the Minnesota Vikings. Like that doesn't make sense, but pizza ranch, Kirk, um, the buffet obviously is great. Now do you always do, do you always do pizza or do you mix in the chicken as well? Cause the chicken at pizza ranch, Kirk is underrated. Yeah. I gotta be honest with you. I don't really touch any of all that, that greasy stuff. Uh, that's just what it shows on the commercial. I just really touch the salad. I'll maybe I'll maybe eat a little bit of the cactus bread here and there, but what you see is just for show. I actually really haven't ate touch of the pizza. Zimmer will be so pissed. Uh, 
if I started eating any of that. But uh, you just it inhale, looks good. Inhale protein shakes in your car <laughs> and then go, inhale, the go in there and uh, do some commercials and look like I'm having a good time. <laughs> it's an easy life. Well, go back to your pudding, Kirk. Thanks for joining us again. I'll, yeah. I'll ask you maybe one more. Yeah. God bless. God bless. Eat the chocolate ones. <laughs> that is <laughs> that is book. true about the pizza ranch, though. I have growing up, I have family from Montevideo, Minnesota, yeah. so out west, and they have pizza ranch and Casey's there, and that is all you need. Like, it's everything. I would look forward to going there because of the pizza ranch. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. It's so true. It's so stupid. It makes no sense to people that don't get it, but you get it. it it's yeah. totally there. They have yep. the napkin yeah. of all the locations, and every location on the napkins like a town of three thousand people or yeah. less. It's, it's the beauty <laughs> it's like of it. Like a requirement they, to have a pizza yeah, ranch they've, location. Yeah, they've got the pizza the ranch, and it's, it's terrific. I, I personally like pizza ranch is a good spot. Like when you're a little hungover. Oh and, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Great place go there, for eat that. some greasy food. You might feel like shit. A little you're not going to feel any but, better afterwards, but you, you don't well, walk into pizza ranch being like, I'm going to feel better when I leave this. Th- place. That's <laughs> why, that's why I remember we were in there. We went to like the one in Farmington after like the first Vikings game, because we were doing the Kirk bit. We took a picture out of there Yep. and I'm like, there's no fucking way this guy eats this. No, nope. there's just not <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> like, not a chance. Any nutritionist would let anyone who's in relatively athletic I'm like, touch I that. I love it, but this is it's just so <laughs> greasy, and it's it's. I I love I. It's good, but it's like, oh, this guy does not eat this in season, at least. So yeah, yeah it's not. I, I I'm guessing it's not a, a great stop for professional athletes. I'm guessing <laughs> no, they're it's not. Like, it's not on the not on the plan that they're looking to looking to if, abide by. It's a good sponsorship. I was going to say, though, if you want to put Kirk Cousins in a pickle, you'd be like, Kirk, I want you to, before I go to Pizza Ranch, I, I will go to Pizza Ranch and spend my money there, but I need to see you take a bite. And he's going to start sweating. <laughs> he's like, uh, I'm not hungry right now. So you have to try to pull out some excuses to get got, to dodge the question. I got a good home-cooked meal from Julie earlier, so <laughs> we're good to go. <laughs> oh. uh, looking back on, on kind of some stuff you've done in your life, you were a tennis legend in high school, right? Two-time state champion. <laughs> That's a good way to phrase it. Yeah. Tennis yeah. legend. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's, I, hey, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm from yeah. Edina. You have to play you either have to play tennis or hockey in Edina and I can't skate, so I had to play tennis. Okay. No, that's the only fair. guy tennis from Edina that sport, can't though. skate. Nobody ever knew that. Nobody ever talks about that. Yeah. I'm like the happy Gilmore of Edina. I can't play. Okay. <laughs> so are you saying you can't skate at all then? Can't have skate you at all. Skate? No. No, I can't it's skate a disaster. Either. I can relate to you. I don't yeah. know how to skate. I can't skate at but, all. But 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 Garzi's from Edina. That is yeah. the I know. Well, I mean, here's part of the problem. Part of the problem is I moved, we moved to Edina when I was seven. And by the time you're seven at Edina, if you don't know how to skate, like you're toast, it's over. Especially now, like it's gotten so stupid with how good they are in hockey. Like they, we were good in hockey when I was in high school, but they're like going to state every year now. And they've always got like seven guys going to Notre Dame and six going to the U. Like it's just absurd. But yeah, so I, I had to play tennis. That's And I and my family could, there's two t- kinds of Edina families. The one that can afford the golf membership at a country club and the one that can yep. only do pool tennis or social. Um, that's yeah. why I can't golf either because my family was that pool <laughs> tennis social. Well, the pool is fun, though. I, you got you got to spend oh, enough time in the pool or you end up with bad tans like me in the summertime. Exactly. But, so that was uh, our, how we rolled. If you ever Did you ever chirp anyone on the tennis court? Oh, yeah. And tennis okay. trash talk is so embarrassing. It's yeah. so oh, embarrassing. Well, do you, so we actually came up with a list of our own tennis chirps. We did in a video right. back. I'm listening. You, you, you sh- tell me the best ones you, you think are in this group, but there's about five or six of them. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first one is you should just stick to that forehand motion you do in the shower. Uh, <laughs> they got a tennis. They got a bathroom at this tennis club because I'm about to drop a deuce. Uh, someone he- keeps hitting the net. You say, hey, did you know there's even a net there? That's another one. Uh, when your opponent has put on some weight since the last time you faced off against them, you just say the only thing you're serving is yourself, some carbs. That's a good one. Uh, when someone misses the ball a lot, you just say the ball must not be big enough, but you probably have heard that one before. Yeah. Um, does that racket even have strings because the ball's going right through it? Uh, do you work in computers because you're a fucking hack? That's another one. Um, <laughs> that's universal some, for all sports. I, I yeah, like you can use that one that, in that's golf, That's a universal too. one for any, all the kids out there. Put that one in your pocket. Yep, yes. yep. For the 10th time since we started the show, I hope there's not kids listening because yep. we're probably not the best <laughs> influence, but... Uh, in a way, we are. But I would say we are, in a sense. We're ourselves. That's, that's what's important when you're a kid. Uh, two more. When when the guy who – you know how the, the guy who, like, hits it over the fence all the time because he thinks he's, like, playing baseball or something? You just yeah, say, yeah. Uh, easy yeah, Barry players. Bonds, this isn't the home run derby. And then finally, when uh, when you're up 15 <laughs> love, you say – you know, you say the score, 15 love, it's probably the only love you'll ever find. So that's oh. just <laughs> – I don't know. Yeah, that's – I'd say anything around love or deuce is good. I think yep. you're on the right track. I like the second one. I like the last one. 
Um, I like the one that's universal for all sports because, you know, kids shouldn't specialize. You should play yeah. as many sports as you can until you, know, exactly. you pick one. But those yeah. are those are OK. Those are solid. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What were some of your go to yeah. chirps? He's going to ask. Uh, well, basically what I'm trying to think this is a long time ago now. It's like 20 plus years. Um, like we used to have I don't know why we called it this, but if a, if a guy was playing out of his mind, you called it. You said he was tree like he was a tree. I don't know why that happened, but like hmm. if, 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 if someone was just, you know, just in the zone and just kicking your ass is like, but he usually wasn't that good. It was like, well, why is this kid treen? So like you would yell that like mad at yourself. Like this guy's such a tree. Yeah. You're trying to, like, get <laughs> the opponent. That's that's a good one. I like that. Yeah. So that, that was one, like, I didn't really do that. Like my parents were pretty strict, like about like, you know, it's supposed to be a gentleman's game. A sport yeah, of tennis. for sure. And I remember saying, like, college tennis is where when I played at Iowa, you like that humble brag? When I played Division One Big Ten tennis, yeah, guys, um, excuse that's... me. Um, and then I, I literally probably ate too much pizza ranch, and that's why I was out. But um, oh, it goes full circle. The, uh, there you go. <laughs> I, I, I remember, like, when you got to college, like, guys were just jackasses. Like, it was just really weird. Like, I, I had a friend of mine that went to Wisconsin, and he came to watch me when we played them, and he got done as a high school buddy. And he's like, when did you turn into such a jackass? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I just couldn't believe what you were doing and saying out there. But it's just like, I don't know what it was. Like, it was just competitive. It was just, you know, whatever. But I remember saying one time, I'm like, do we realize we're all tennis players here? Like, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to, like, drop the gloves. You know, we're not going to go fight. Like, that would be yeah. embarrassing. I'm going to take like, off my left wristband and we're going to fist fight. We're going to change the game of tennis. <laughs> we're going to make <laughs> fights happen yeah. in tennis. Six, six, like, but not too much blood, guys, because we're wearing white, okay? We're wearing yes. white right now. Yeah. So very noticeable. Noticeable. God nothing, knows you don't want to go the... home with a dirt dirt stain or anything <laughs> yeah, like it was, that. It was almost like, like it was it Zoolander when the models fight, like, don't touch the face. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Any, yeah. Any, any, anything <laughs> with the face. Like, I remember saying to somebody, I'm like, why are we acting so tough? Like, we're not tough we're not scaring anybody like what are we because we're in this little cocoon here and no one's here it's not like they're packing yeah. williams arena to come watch us it was yeah. like <laughs> uh we're not impressing anybody like why are we doing this and i never got a good answer because we just kept on doing that well uh, well uh i mean we're we're uh shoot i'm trying to think oh. well i was gonna say so you're saying that oh my gosh i lost my train of thought Dude, this is right? like a video I tweeted of I, you the I, other day. I, this was just so like the bad. same thing. I've done this before. No, I was going to ask, well, so were these guys that like were the guys that were chirping a lot, were these just guys you played with at Iowa or was this like across the Big Ten? Everywhere. Everywhere. Just everywhere? It was just, yeah, it was just – and some guys have ever heard of the uh, the comedian Michael Costa? Yes, I, yeah. yep, I definitely him up. heard He's done some yeah. stuff on The Daily Show or whatever. He was at the University of Illinois, which out of nowhere turned into like this tennis superpower. And he wouldn't remember me at all because I was just this no-talent dude from Iowa. But he was like a good player. Like he played pro for a while, like the minor leagues. Guy was yeah. nuts. I mean, just absolutely insane. Not even like chirping, just doing like weird stuff. Like yeah. just, he just had weird characters like out of nowhere. He's one that comes to mind. But yeah, it was just, it was just weird, like. And it wasn't all the time, but like it was just every once in a while you get a couple of dudes that were like, and it's it's a team thing because like you're all playing next to each other, so that stuff like feeds off. You know, it sounds weird, mm -hmm. but like your match can affect yeah. another match. You see that this guy's losing and he's supposed to win, or this guy's winning and he's supposed to lose. Like it's weird yeah. how that stuff happens because it's an individual sport, but when I mean, you have a team, you have a team. That kind of reminds well because I played high school golf and it was the same story, right? You're all in different groups playing against different people and i remember like someone would walk up to me with six holes left and they'd be like yeah you need to go three under in the next six holes for us yeah. to win and i just, i'm like oh, well thanks. that's not gonna fucking happen yeah yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. let's just go for silver we at did this that point, to a guy in high school a kid a kid in high school we were playing a team that you know we were we easily beaten but this kid was in a battle it was like our number two singles player and i'm sure these tennis stories are really getting the downloads and the clicks so sorry for ruining oh, yeah. your oh, show no, this is great oh, we, no this we, is we, we gotta change stupid. it up from snake stories to tennis that's how much yeah. we, that's how flexible yes. we are well you could have talked about meat sauce's football career but as we documented um his senior highlight video he appeared in the first two games and then never appeared again it's one of the great <laughs> deals. It's, one, it's one of the great great videos of all time there's like two plays he fell down on one of them and that was it <laughs> <laughs> numbers number and he i can make fun of him for that he knows but we but we told the kid that he needed the we needed the match like his match to win like I don't know how he was so out of touch that he didn't realize that we just beat this team you know really easily but we we're like dude it's three three like we need you to win this and it yeah. completely messed with them we were just messing with him and he ended up losing and then basically because of that man he was pissed he was so pissed but it's like 
you got to do that stuff every once in a while, you know, lighten oh, yeah. it up, lighten the mood a little bit and give that kid a little crap. That's yeah, funny. exactly. Well, you got to flare up fun. the game of tennis. I, I feel like if I played tennis, I, I would just, I would just like load up the shit talk. I would just, oh, yeah. ma- it'd be too quiet for me. Like, I mean, like I played with like my friends and stuff like that in, in a casual games and I'm just, I get into it and I'd be like, I'd be like, if I could play competitive tennis, I'd be like, I couldn't be that civil guy, you know, just kind of being cool and calm like you do in golf. And I'd have yeah. to like spice it up a little bit. Well, I think it's and right. I think, that, I think that's great. I think it's right on brand for us to do like the most shit talking, but probably be the worst ones out there. That's kind of like that. That's who <laughs> that, we are as, I think, as athletes. Needs that why, why I would do it. I yeah. think it's perfect when like. The biggest shit talker is the guy that's wearing all the accessories. Like he has oh. all the wristbands, yep. the headband, but, but the he's high just socks, but just not a not a sight of <laughs> talent. Just horrible at all. Well, it's like Sack Lodge. It's Bradley Cooper and Wedding Crashers. You know, I mean, now he, yeah. you know, he's out there. He's got the whole uniform on. He's doing warm ups yep. before, like, but and he was kicking ass. I mean, I would just watch that movie last night. It was on by by chance, and I always got to watch that one again. You got to have guys like that out there. So you have to, to get with your tennis lingo. Was he a tree? Yeah, was he a tree? I don't know. I feel like he always had that in him. Okay, you know? so it's like yeah. okay, so yeah, it's like where you're... you're supposed to beat a guy, but he's beating you, and you wanted to demean him, and like, and it's stupid to do. It's not respectful at all. But sometimes you got to do that, I guess. I guess to put it in like, I guess this would make me and Jake understand it more. Like when Virginia lost to the 16th seed, like UMBC was a tree. They, they, were were they were a tree. They were a tree. Oh, big tree. Big tree. That was a fucking oak tree, oak tree from the eighteen <laughs> from yes. the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> yes. That dude. <laughs> that red that trees wrecked in my bracket <laughs> so bad. First round. I, I like that term. I'm gonna run with that. Shit. I'm gonna run with yeah, that too. A tree. A tree. Well, well, you said that you went to Iowa though to play tennis. So do you have? You, do you still have this animosity towards Iowa like all of us Minnesota fans do still, or do you have a little soft spot? It depends. I, it's that's a good question. It's one when I got the sideline job with the Gophers, like Gopher message boards went crazy. Like they were oh, so. Yeah, this like, Who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, well, yeah. Like the Gopher hole, a bunch of old people kid on that. They're Gopher, yeah. Gopher Illustrated you're, you're just on fire. I mean, so does a little bit of you hurt inside when they do the "Who hates Iowa" bit? Chant? No, yeah. but I've I've said this before. So I think that's the dumbest chance ever. I just think yeah. it's stupid. Um, it wasn't I don't know really how well you guys thought out. I agree it. with you there. Because. Like I can tell you from the Iowa side, they're like, "Well, what is that? Like, that's stupid. Like, that's yeah. not hurting yeah. us." Like, but we also we hate Wisconsin, too- but we don't yell that when right. we play the Badgers. We just so, well, we say I "fuck the weird, Badgers," which is like a step above. We say "fuck the Badgers." Upbringing. Yeah. Weird upbringing in that. Um, like my whole family's from Iowa, but I grew up here, and so I grew up going to like all those games. You know what I mean? Like I, I went to games in Iowa City with my family. Like I went to games obviously here. Like. So like I I don't know people don't believe me but I'm like I pulled for both teams like I I liked both teams mostly the Iowa thing was because all my family liked it and I loved my family and we have good memories like of events around that like I truthfully like I don't really have that much of an affinity to them now um, I'm bummed out that <laughs> this is how impactful I was as an Iowa tennis player they're dropping the Iowa tennis program after this season so good job by me good oh, job damn. by everybody um, yeah. <laughs> but so I I really don't have like I. I mean, I, I want to like, I want the Gophers to beat them so badly every time they play. Um, oh, yeah, mostly because yeah. of just stuff that's happened even since I've left, like what happened with their strength coach, you know, things that have happened yeah. on the sidelines during games. Like there's just such, like, I, I want them to win so badly uh, and get Floyd of Rosedale. Um, because, but it was a weird upbringing because I liked both teams. And when you're a kid, like, you know, my aunt Connie, who I've already dropped twice, she's like, you can cheer for both of them. You know, that's fine. Like, and when they play each other, like, just enjoy the game, whatever. It's not a big deal. I know that sounds sacrilegious, like one of your rivals, well, but when I was growing up, that's how it was. And we both hate Wisconsin, so that was, like, the common ground. Yeah, that works. Yeah, it's like your aunt is, like, giving you permission. You can cheer for both teams. Like, yep. you're yeah. fine. You've earned yeah. my blessing. I, I, I yeah. will say, though, like, Kinnick Stadium, I went down to that gopher game. Obviously not this past fall, but the fall before when we were, you know, I think we were – we were nine and yeah, nine and all. Yeah, nine and all. Right after the Penn State game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. and that was a hell of a game. But that was my first time ever at Kinnick Stadium, and that was a blast. I, I will say that yeah. was very. Well, I'm glad fun. you brought that up because one of the things that's turned me off of Iowa in general is like I remember going to games when I was a kid, and like you park in the, the driveway of some random person, and you, your family's tailgating, and you're throwing football, and then going with my grandparents or whatever, like. It is the drunkest place ever. I don't know oh, if you, yeah. and that was a night. It was a it was a night game. Like I remember walking on the field, um, and 
there was like a guy who was probably 60 years old in the front row, which is, you know, right there at Kinnick. And he's just got puke all over his face, all over his face, <laughs> like just everywhere. I'm like, Hey, I'm all for having a good time. Obviously. Like, um, <laughs> like, so, but I'm just like, what is going on here? And even a couple of years ago, like the stuff that was coming out of those adults mouths at oh, the yeah. players, everything else. I'm like, this is not like, I'm sure it was always like this. I was just so naive. But I'm like, this is not good. Like, this is not acceptable. No. And you've got like wives that are like pulling their husband down. Cause they're like, you know, they're <laughs> sitting there just mortified. Like, why did I get married when I was 22? No, it's cause I'm yeah. from a small town in Iowa and that's what you do. And now he's 50 and I'm miserable. And this is my husband, the one that's MFing, you know, college kids and 0.5 on a Saturday, 11 o'clock kickoff. Like, well, so that just kind of turned and I'm, I'm no Puritan now here. Like I went to Iowa city. Like, I spent a lot of time on that Ted mall. Like there's a reason I only went there two years. Cause I was asked to leave more or less, but you know, you, so that's just kind of, but it's a cool environment. They've got great fans, obviously, but there's just so much like stuff like that where I'm, maybe I'm just getting old, but I'm like, man, that's just, I just can't imagine being like that. And that's just, so that's one of the reasons why it's like, man, I'd like to beat those guys. At least the, at least the wives have some restraint from what you see though, because you look at like NASCAR events and the wives are just joining right in. It's just, yeah, you know, that's, <laughs> that's the worst is that, when it's both of them. Yeah. It's, that, that gets it's dangerous. Like, oh, everyone in here is on that side. Got it. I was going to say the Daytona 500 probably blows Iowa city. There's, out of the water there's probably some crazy some shit people. that gets said. Yeah. There. It's, nope. it, it's also wild when the husband is the one like calming the wife down. Oh like yeah! When the, wife is the, when the wife is the aggressor, sometimes I think it's it goes that worse. route too. Like that's yeah. terrifying. Mm -hmm. Never. You good. can't really like say anything back to her. It's, well, it's the, a weird the situation. husband can't just like storm off in embarrassment. Like the wife right. can storm off in embarrassment. That's like allowed. no guy, you can't just ditch your wife. You know, there's right. some kind of like man code there where the wife. And you can't just leave rain, the football game either. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for these tickets. Yeah, that's that's how you're gonna feel about it every yeah. time. I was going to say, Garzi, we need to get you one of those, uh, you know, like one of those lifted stage things that Booger McFarland sits on and does yeah. like his, his sideline reports. We need, we need to somehow fund that. I don't know we can well, it was that. nice to be, I was in the crowd this year because I wasn't allowed on the field because of COVID stuff and there were no fans. So I was in most places, I was in like row one or row two and I could see everything perfectly. Yeah. I missed being on the field because you, you can't replicate yeah, that, yeah, but sure. it's so nice to be able to see like what's actually happening. A lot of times I don't even really know. I can't always see Blocked it. Blocked by people. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, know, I always, That's I always nice. love the when you'd sit with the cardboard cutouts and you'd kind of like pretend to interview them almost, like uh, <laughs> yeah, in some Nebraska, yeah, in Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> like it brings like me that? back to you, you could do yeah. our bit where you ask them loaded questions like rate Scott Fo Frost's performance on a scale of yeah. one to ten, but you can't go below an eight or above an eight. Is that, I think it was like a uh, you can't go above, above, above a, seven. a seven or something or above a six, <laughs> and they'd be like, whoa, 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 well then seven. Or, and then we <laughs> then we'd ask them at the same time, all right, rate PJ Fleck on a scale of one to ten, but you cannot go below an eight. Mm -hmm. And they'd be yeah. like, oh, oh than an eight. That. <laughs> Oh, but you do that same bit with the cardboard it's, cutouts. It's great. Did you? Uh, where have you? Ex what is the best place yet in your experience of doing satellite reporting? What's your favorite Big Ten school to visit? Ooh, well, there's differences. There's stadiums. Yeah. There's things to do on Friday night. I mean, the best part of the job is where we eat on Friday night. Truthfully, that's what I'd be looking for. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'd be looking for. And we've had like like. What I, and then there's like I love I'm like the only person that's glad Maryland's in the Big Ten because I love going to Washington D.C. and like yep. oh, you know, yeah, it was a yeah. night game this past year so I could like go check out the National Mall and like do all that nerdy stuff like I love that mm. like that's the best. Um, but you get your you know handful of restaurants in all these college towns that you go to, you know, and we just know that in, if we're in Bloomington, Indiana, we're going to a place called Zagreb's because they have great meatballs and a great steak and it's like an old school steakhouse. If you go to uh, Illinois, usually, uh, there's a place called Alexander's, one of those places where you cook your own steak, you know, on the charcoal right there, oh, nice. which is yep. a cool vibe. Nice. Um, yeah. you go to Wisconsin, we stay out in Middleton. So there's a, like a Middleton village where there's, uh, like a, it's like just a dive burger place where the burgers are like three bucks, the beers are like two bucks. And it's just like the greatest, you know, greatest thing. That's like what I care about is the, because that's the best part is like hanging out with the radio crew on the road and doing those things. So. Mm -hmm. um that's the important stuff um in terms of places to go i like going to places we've never been because the big 10 schools are all kind of the same you know they've all got good crowds they've all got good tradition nebraska is pretty unique because everybody is so into it like in the town everybody's in on it 
reds everywhere and uh, nebraska black n is everywhere uh, most of those college towns are the same but i liked going we went to new mexico state in like 2013 oh, i'll never aggie vision be cool. there you go you yeah. remember that i'll never in my oh, i'll never in my life be in las cruces new mexico ever again I can't. Wait, was that the name of the? Was that like a bowl game? <laughs> no, dude. So What's that the was the name of their bro- So there, I don't think anyone else picked up the broadcast. I think you had to watch Correct. it through what they called Aggie Vision it was through their the New Mexico State website. It was the <laughs> shittiest broadcast of all time. <laughs> yep. It was so bad. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't get any cameras or any crews there to put it on like a regular deal, and they're like, "Well, we'll just use the student feed." And oh my God. you know, it's a student oh feed, so they're God. working He's- things out. You know, oh. yeah, it's like a bunch of college kids like, who are probably hung over running Cruces. the cameras. Yeah, it was bad, but I'll never be in Las Cruces ever in my life. So that was fun going to Corvallis, Oregon yeah. for Oregon State. That was fun. Be, I'm hoping cool. we all go to Boulder this year because the Gophers are supposed to play Colorado. Yeah, um, Ooh, yeah. I'd, I'd love to go to Boulder. Like Boulder Fresno was cool. Awesome. Fresno yeah. was cool. A friend of mine works at a Fresno radio station out there and took us on a tour of taco trucks. It's like one of the great taco truck towns in the country nice. and he had like a printed laminated sheet of like the four stops we were going to oh, and it was shit. like oh, laminated one of the great food <laughs> nights of all time so that's like what that we really business. do yeah. yeah yeah and so like fresno was cool and to see those different stadiums and see how different schools do it like because the big Ten's the big 10 michigan's what you would think ohio state's yep. what you would think wisconsin's what you would think um i actually like illinois a lot believe it or not because the stadium's old it's got a cool feel I mentioned Alexander's, the steakhouse where you can cook your own stuff. It's got a steak and shake in the hotel parking lot where we stay, which is always good. You always need that. And you can walk to the game, which is cool. So there's just, there's a lot of different places. Like I like going for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. I I would really, yeah, I would look forward to those non-conference games. I mean, you only get like three now a year, but I mean, you would want to like. Yeah. To travel. And most of them are home. Like every other year you get a non-conference game on the road. So it's always cool when it's like something different where you haven't been. Well, it's too bad that they uh, then they canceled the the games against North Carolina, like the home and home. No, those are still scheduled. Well, they yeah, did, but they, they, they were, were supposed canceled. to be a few years ago. Now they're brought back. They got canceled originally. Oh. Now they brought them back. So I think we're okay. supposed to go there next year or two years from now or the year after, something like I, that. I wanted to go to Navy. We were supposed to play Navy. We were yeah. supposed to go oh, to Annapolis. That would have been sweet. Like, how, right. how cool would that have been? I was really bummed when that got canceled. Yeah. I was going to say it would be fun to go to North Carolina, though. You know, Yeah, absolutely. That would be a fun place to go. Absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh Garzi, before we wrap it up, does, does anyone have any other questions? Um oh the Edina bit. So you, you played ten, oh, yeah. you played tennis in Edina and we asked Ben Lieber this question too. So what is it like being a cake eater? Yeah, well from your <laughs> perspective. <laughs> Yeah, Obviously, I'm embracing you embrace it. it with the name of the show. I but... got my Hawks sweatshirt on right now. This was a gift. You know, this is the uh, the Hawks from the Mighty Ducks. Um mm. I ordered oh, yeah. yeah, yep. Who do you the guys have? And... Do, you, do you have a close uh, a close sponsor on this show? Who does your gear? Who makes it? We, you guys make uh, it. Well, we are we make some of our own, and then we also work with the Minnesotan up in White Bear Lake. Okay, they, they yeah, because I don't want to step on any sponsor because there's so many great like local companies that make stuff. Like Minnesotan's one of them. Um, Soda Stick, obviously, I'm wearing one of their hats. And yeah, just, the this, yeah, yeah. Yep. This is uh, I got my dad that hat. Yeah. This is Beauty Status, I think, that made this, and I think they sent this to me trolling me because I just ordered some hats from them. And I had some really cool, like, state of Minnesota hats with all these different colors. And then this sweatshirt just showed up with it. Oh. And I didn't order it. <laughs> and so I think they were trolling me. And now it actually fits, so I'm happy about that. But what's it like being a cake eater? It's great. It's the greatest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I can't explain it to you. It's it, Nothing is better. It's the great. What it does, though, when you grow See, Lieber achieved you diamond which is different right. than me just growing up in it. You inherited like, You yeah. were just there. Yeah, like I'm slumming it out here in Minnetonka. I can't get back in. I'm trying like hell to get back in, but I'm out <laughs> yeah, here there's in a waiting. Yeah, there's a waiting list. <laughs> and so what's what's great about grow, what's wrong about growing up there, though, and I've said this to a lot of people, I say this to the kids there when I go back and like talk to high school classes or whatever, I'm like, you have no idea about what reality is at all. You, at some point, <laughs> Unless you're one of the grades and the grade above me is like this, where you're all going to get jobs and you're working for your dad or one of your dad's friends. Um, yep. The rest of you have got some stuff to figure out once you get out of here, because it's not all yeah. like this in the land, you know, the land of milk and honey. Like, you're good. You're going to be fine, probably. But just be, be ready for that. And I tell all the guys, I'm like, you'll never have a group of girls that actually think you're cool like you do right yep. now, because you are yeah. cool. Believe me, you're not cool. You're yeah. going to go out. You're 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 not cool at all. So just enjoy it now. Be nice to them and you know, do what you do. But it's uh, it's a good place to grow up, but it certainly skews your reality. 
that's see i grew up knowing reality. that so from high school all i could do was go was up so it, it's the, yeah. yeah that's that's There's why i'm kind of glad for that. It, exactly There's something to be said for that yeah well i never felt like i, I grew up i i graduated from burnsville and <laughs> i had to watch edina beat burnsville like eight nine <laughs> ten years in a row in the section finals in so hockey was, yeah. yeah yep in hockey yeah, so i that was a tough one I didn't ever feel like we were going going up at Burnsville, but uh, you know, it was it was always a competitive rivalry. It was always fun. That was a, it's like I just seen dynamic, Edina, <laughs> but too because I oh, grew yeah. up in South. I don't blame you. Yeah, <laughs> I grew up in South St. Paul, so like in the cities, it's kind of like the complete opposite of Edina. Like in South St. Paul, like everyone in my grade was working when they were fifteen, and like yeah, basic basically like that's why our athletics were down is because people were just focused on work. It's just crazy the, the difference, even though they're like not that far away from each other. We're trying yeah, to make that it's money. It's a different Named universe. The, plant, the Packers. It's a different universe. It's a different world. There is no no sense of reality. Like I was telling someone the other day, a girl I went to high school with, like every time I ate dinner with her family, we were at Interlock and Country Club. And I'm like, that's not normal. Like that's not yeah, like yeah. like that's first of all, and I didn't like I wasn't like that into it. Like and like this is stupid. Like this is not where we need to eat for every meal. Like there are yeah, other yeah, restaurants. Take me to here. Pizza Ranch. Yeah, I ate dinner yeah, with exactly. the girl's family. We went to A and W. That's where that's we went. Great though. That's yeah. all American that's food. The, that's the common like, man. I can't yeah. hang here. Like I knew I was going to be a radio guy. I'm like I don't have the chops to hang here. Like I'm not going into <laughs> finance or insurance or something. Yeah, my dad doesn't like own a bank. <laughs> no, a my dad. My dad's a busy. My dad's a consultant, but like I'm not going to do that. Like I can't handle that. Like he's. That's his deal. He's a business right. school maven. I that's this is not going to be my scene, and it's not. It's not my scene now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, uh, guards, we, we love having you on. Now? What was that? The lightning. We got round. lightning round. Yeah, rapid yes. fire. We're, we're getting the name reckon. Yeah, it's it's getting. What? We're getting there. We're, we're getting around. Take with a few this more bit, episodes, segment, but, but no. people like All right. it. All Let's right, you ready? Ten ten yeah. questions uh, as fast as you can go. All right. You're on a deserted island, and uh, there's another ship that washes up to shore with one type of alcohol in it that you get for the rest of the time on the island. What is it? IPA. IPA. I like oh, that. Good choice. Yes. Uh, how many fourth graders IPA, could you fend uh, off? Let me amend that. It's oh, yeah. got to be at least 6.4 or above because I've got yeah. kids, and I need I need two each night to put me to sleep. Is there an exact like, like – is there like an exact IPA beer, like a – uh, I like them all. I mean, I like all the Minnesota ones. Like, I like, I like uh, Sweet Child Divine. I like Furious. I like. Um, I don't remember what the Excelsior one is called. I like. Yeah. I mean, I like all of them. I, yep. I like all of them. Yeah, none of which are sponsors. I always have to. <laughs> I like wish someday, someday. What are your sponsors? Do you have any beer sponsors? You drink uh, heavily none, during the show. I know. None yet. yet. Uh, Golden Light is the unofficial sponsor, <laughs> and we have um, uh, okay. Boathouse Brothers across the street from the studio. We've almost put enough money into them to where we're their sponsor now. Yeah, <laughs> we we've been over there enough. I don't know how that works? Right exactly. across the street, but <laughs> but we're, maybe we're getting there. We'll see. <laughs> By the so way, sauce in is red wine. What a crap answer. Yeah, yeah I was, oh, red what? wine. I was so, wine. so thrown off by that. Ever since he got me, list- that just turned him into a red wine. Yeah, I was drinker, listening to that. Like. I'm like, oh Jesus, red wine. Jesus. <laughs> Terrible. Well, not. Nothing against sauce, but you look at him and you're like, that's not a red wine guy. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> and maybe it's just a phase. Okay. It might be just a yeah. phase. Yeah. You, you we'll, know, we'll, we'll ask him again in a few months and yeah. we'll see if that's still the answer. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> uh, how many fourth graders are you fending off in self defense? It's got to be less than Lieber. He said three. I'll say two. Okay, or did he say two? five? He said seven. Remember. He did say seven. Seven. Yep, and then I, I think what meat sauce said like ten or something. When you like, have no Lieber said no, and there are guys, there are guys like following this who are like, oh, an entire classroom. It's like no, stop. Yeah. Lieber set the standard. Depends on how angry these... we are. Depends <laughs> yeah. on what they did. Yeah, yeah, I suppose yeah, that if there's if there's some sort of motive there. Uh, do you prefer Minneapolis or St. Paul? Probably Minneapolis. Yep. You, you want elaboration yep. or is that it? <laughs> probably I don't Minneapolis? Know. But I like. Do <laughs> you want to defend yourself? <laughs> I like, I especially like South St. Paul. South St. Paul is hey, great. It's the best. Oh man, yeah. No, St. Paul is St. Paul is cool. It gets a bad rap, but I like. I, I'd lean Minneapolis. Our producer's crying of laughter, and I'm not quite sure why. Yeah, I don't know why either. This is producer weird. Andy, I don't get it. Um, okay, <laughs> would you rather slap a random baby or your own grandmother? By the way, amendment, um, or just a notation. And I yep. sorry to keep bringing up sauce, but I listened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
how about, I think you have to slap a baby, right? To get him breathing. <laughs> <laughs> you have to slap a baby. I mean, I'm doing the baby a favor, I think. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Well, he brought, spank uh, him? he brought some sort of like, I didn't even know that was a thing, dude, that you have to like hit a child for it to be alive. Yeah, no, that's oh, yeah, like what he, doctors he, used to do in the old days. They would just like spank it for no reason. Like but that's <laughs> there's a lot of things they did in the old days they don't do anymore. That um, might be irrelevant. Right. Yeah, I'd say my own <laughs> grandma. Crazy. By the way, my answer yeah. would be my old my grandma. I think she could have taken it. She's well, tough. Yeah. A terrible thing that a few guests have said is like, well, my grandma's dead, so I'm just slapping. Like, <laughs> I'll just do that. I'll slap my. Like, it's weird, man. Of course, yeah. it's, it's the whole odd. the whole you're, the whole you're question. Doing a baby is weird, a favor. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Baby, well, I, I was I was thinking I'm like I don't even know if every baby needs to technically even be slapped and that was it, it does put hair on the chest I've had though. three kids I've had three none of them have been slapped at birth <laughs> I promise you that I was okay. there for all three of them none of them have been right. slapped at birth oh, oh, oh. all right that that's some good insight yes um oh boy where are we at here oh okay would you rather walk walk to work in heels or drive to work in reverse drive to work in reverse yeah, Heels yeah are I don't think I don't know how yep. they do it. Yeah, exactly. Um, would you rather never speak again or always say what's on your mind? I'll always say what's on my mind. Yep. Yep. Fair it's not answer. fair. You ask radio guys this question. That's I know. Sort of flaw you, in, in this logic you for did, your. I either thought way, about it, it could be dangerous. Well, radio yeah. guy. We, we I love do, not we, talking. We do ask it all the time. And we're just waiting for that one person to say that and be like, we'll be like, yeah, you'll lose your job. Yeah, but I don't want to get caught saying some of the terrible things that go on in my head. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> people like Tom Brenneman or, you know, that, that oh, guy. Any, that yeah, happens. anyone on the land yeah. of misfit announcers. Ooh. Yeah. Taking a leap that you're, when you answer it that way, you're taking a leap that you're a good person that has. Good yeah, thoughts. fair enough. Yeah. And that's yeah. a good point. And, yes. And that's yeah, the brand like I'm going to try to promote on It's a Bit Tonight. That's the brand right. I'm promoting. You're, you're going to be the good person. Is a good person. <laughs> yep. He's a good person. He's like Kirk Cousins. Yeah. yeah, I am a great person. You know, I, I just, well, actually, I don't consider myself a good or a bad person. I just try to promote a, a, a great message to everybody every day, create positive energy, and, uh, you know, just try to go out and, and create something good. God bless Kirk Cousins. Well, there was that night that Kirk Cousins had, like, 20 McGoldens, and uh, he was praying a lot the next day after that. <laughs> so that, that, was, that was one slip up, but we'll give you the rest of the credit, Kirk. Yes. Thanks. Um, if you're, are you taking the all-expenses-paid trip to Cleveland? Yes. Yeah. Because you can oh, find. I don't sauce. like. It's a you, dump. You, that's a shithole. <laughs> he's never been to. He's never been to Cleveland. You can. You can find fun anywhere. You can yeah. find every town's got a place you can go. And there, if there's IPAs there, if there's a TV there, I think they have a river there. Yeah. There's plenty yeah. of things to do in Cleveland. It's, I'll take it's it. Paid for. All right. Um, what's more realistic in your eyes, ghosts or aliens? Aliens. Aliens? Okay. Yeah. Um, would you rather always have one rollerblade on your foot or have someone walking in front of you slower than the pace you want to go? The latter. Someone walking slower. We do Ooh. 10 shows at the State Fair every single year, so I'm much more accustomed to people walking really slowly yeah. in front of me so as I'm trying to that. get somewhere. Yep. Yeah. I, had this I know whole, how to I... sidestep if I need to. Yeah, it's the rollerblade I had... thing. And I mentioned I'm the only guy from Medina that can't skate, so that's it's even on one skate. It's I did just have this image in my mind, though, of you like running after PJ for a halftime interview, and there's just a guy <laughs> kind of slowly walking in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. PJ, just a comment. There's way. this casual guy. Tanner just, Morgan's like, in my way. Yeah. 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 Tanner, move. Yeah. Who? Shove what? him out of the way. Um, if a movie's made about your life, who's playing you? Mm. Who would I want to play me? Yeah. Yeah, it's up to you. It's your call. Man. I want somebody that's in much better shape than I am and better looking than me. I would okay. say, I meant, I mean, I already mentioned Bradley Cooper, the guy that makes good movies. I'm taking Bradley mm -hmm. Cooper. It's a close one with Matt Damon. Yeah. Um, I look like neither of them. I'm aware of that. Um, but that's who I want. You that's asked fine. me the question, no, that's... that's who I want, so leave me alone. Yeah, that's the bit. <laughs> Respect good. the answer. Perfect. All right, Justin, we've say, we'd have to say we've loved having you on. This has been a blast. You're going to have to come into our, our studio in Prior Lake sometime and, and see all the – all the fun that happens all the in here and, and uh any any final words for the it's a bit viewers no keep doing what you guys are doing you got a lot of fans out there um 
I would like to bring some pizza ranch down to the studio. I think that would be fun. All right. Um, hell yeah. One of these times, I think in my room here, I think I've got some stuff we could add to your memorabilia room to liven it up a little bit. I got a lot of crap Ooh. in here, and my wife told me I need to get rid of, so I'll probably just dump it on you guys if that's cool. That's totally cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. I love it. Yeah. But I appreciate well, you having me on. And call yeah. anytime. Keep keep doing what you're doing. You got a lot of fans out here. Yeah, we appreciate that, Justin. Yeah, we're thanks. we're gonna take a quick break, folks, and we'll be right back. 